G'day, my name's Trenton from Hands Like Houses, and I'm hanging with Rob on Front Row Live. This is the end of the tour. Now you get to relax a little bit and then back back on the road. Pretty much, yeah. We've got like uh, just less than two months yeah. at home before we kind of head out again doing the Australian tour and then um, off to South Africa after that. So it's going to be uh, pretty hectic, a lot of in and out traveling, right. uh, in and out of home for the next kind of six months. But fingers crossed all for good stuff. Now, congratulations on the new record, album number four. You guys took a risk on this one to try something something different. Not so much of a risk, but I feel like, you know, when, when bands try something different with their material, I feel like it's always a nerve-wracking experience. Yeah, I mean, look, we've always tried to do things, you know, a little bit differently each album. I mean, I don't feel like Anon's more different to Dissonance than Dissonance was to Unimagine. It might have been in a different direction that people were trying to predict, but, like, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we always try and keep things evolving as we grow and as our influences change and what we're listening to at any given moment in time so yeah i mean we've been really stoked on the response it's been um fantastic and you know obviously trying it out on tour is probably just as much of a you know uh, a nervy nervy thing but right. um honestly people have been just as excited about the new songs as everything else so it's been a really nice balance and really cool spread of people now i i heard you mention um which is actually one of my favorite songs on the record sick was was kind of what made you realize like this is the direction we want for this yep. record what was it about that track that you knew that was the direction i don't know just kind of connected um i mean it happened really suddenly i mean the whole album process was about just trusting our instincts yeah. and like let it happen and then um you know trust what comes out naturally and then use that as the foundation to build on and that just seemed like something about that song it just came together so quickly so easily we wrote right. it in like two or three days and it just was done and it was like this song's great <laughs> so it kind of felt yeah i don't know i just kind of felt like that was the best way to shape the record after the fact and um it became that kind of centerpiece for all the other songs to come around it and right. yeah now, as you guys are kind of you know dabbling a little differently on this record um you guys also went into the studio with a new producer colin this yep. is the first time you've worked with colin yep. um so what was it about colin that you guys wanted to work with him um he just had a awesome energy and enthusiasm for what we were doing like it was not just like he's you know this producers that kind of bounce off the walls excited about everything but there was something that he just had this like perspective on what we do and how we you know how we could push ourselves and because right. we haven't we met with a bunch of producers off the back end of warp tour uh, in 2017 um and just we spent a couple of days in la just having a few kind of sit downs you know coffees chats beers with a couple of different people and there's just something about the way that colin like latched onto what we were doing and what we could do i don't know it's just like kind of a no-brainer after that he just had this excitement and energy and right. it made us feel really confident in what we could do and you know we flew him out to australia for a couple of weeks just nice. to kind of jam some songs out with us and that's when we wrote sick um just in my studio at home and it just yeah it just kind of felt right and he just pushed us in all the right directions and getting that real kind of raw sort of you know very analog like high-end analog sort of feel rather than being this kind of super hyper polished like in the box sort of record that we've right. done previously and i mean you know not to say like i'm still stoked on what we did with the last few records but it just felt like it was a nice change of pace and it really embraced the i guess the ethos of the album of just trust what comes and then build on that so yeah and, and doing it more of an analog style do you feel like i personally feel like when when an artist creates a record um doing an analog i feel like when you take it to the live show it's basically the same as the album like yeah. it doesn't change much do you feel it's the same with this record yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, we, we do use like digital amps and stuff just for the convenience factor. And I mean, it sounds like 99% of the real thing. Right. Um, and so, yeah, we, like just the songs being more kind of just, just having more character and having a bit more kind of color and feel. Um, we were able to kind of bring a lot of those kind of amp profiles we used and like in the record and kind of brought it across. And it's, um, yeah, it's just made for a pretty smooth transition into playing the new songs and looking forward to getting more out soon. Right. Now, with back with Clinton, like, did was he familiar with the band prior to, to you guys talking to him? With Colin. Sorry, Colin, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> Sorry, Colin. I think so. Like, he, I think he'd heard of us. He was kind of, fami like, vaguely familiar with what we were doing. Um, yeah, to be honest, I'm not really sure how well he knew us prior to that point. He was a, We were introduced to him through... Uh, um, label executive uh, Eric Tobin at Hopeless yeah, yeah. Um, and he just connected us up and it was in kind of an area of LA we we're familiar with as well and yeah just he just seemed to love what we we're doing like it's like whether he just listened to it then or had kind of known it for a while it just it all carried through so yeah now with with Sick being a little different um, from previous material how different was the writing process for Sick? Um, it was I mean the whole the whole record was kind of that same sort of just like 
sit down, write things, like play something and say, how, you know, what's it feeling like and kind of building off from there. And it was right. kind of, it was all about building on feel and about trusting, like we had the word back brain as kind of one of our buzzwords for the studio is one that we used a lot. Mm-hmm. And just talking about that back brain influence, that natural instinct of like what feels right. Cause you know, we've had three and a half albums now to kind of figure out how we write and how we produce and how we record. Um, and so it really was just about just, you know, letting that experience shape our instincts and then trusting those instincts as the basic thing so you know it it was a lot more natural things came together a lot quicker song by song there were some songs we had to kind of keep rework 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 until it got to a place that it felt like it was it fit on the album um but yeah all in all just it was yeah just that just that feeling of things being just not stressful um we you know with dissonance we were very tightly packed in between tours and in between other commitments so we spent 11 months out of 12 away from home that year um and that itself took a pretty heavy toll on us kind of personally and emotionally um so being able to you know really kind of take time with the record and relax and not feel like we had all this you know really pressing time pressure and like oh we got to finish this before we go on tour and um, you know that just that sort of thing and touring is just a totally different headspace so we had not just time but headspace and um, you know the ability to kind of figure out what album it was going to be and even then we still wrote like half of the album in the studio um, but it was just that process of figuring it out first that gave us that confidence and that More calm relaxed, to be able to yeah just just to be able to relax and enjoy it and I think that, that carries through to the songs for sure. Now do you do you feel like your evolution in songwriting as you go into a new record or is that something that you really like you totally don't even notice? Um, I mean, we're aware of it. Um, I think we tried to let go of our expectations of kind of who we are and what people were expecting from us. Like, I think we just kind of threw that out the window because we're like, well, look, it doesn't matter. Like, what what we do as the five of us, because we are, you know, the, pretty much the same five people that have been in the band for the last 10 years, right. um, with the exception of... I can't believe it's been 10 years already, though. Blows my mind to think about. <laughs> it's like a third of my life. But, um, yeah, it's just like we just kind of... We feel like... like our the five of us writing music together is always going to have a sound it's always going to have a certain fingerprint yeah. to it and sure that might be you know st- it might be like kind of stylistic changes but the substance and like the core foundation of what it is and the, and our sense of songwriting like what makes a song breathe what song, makes a song catchy what makes a song right. work um i think that that is always going to carry through whatever we write no matter what style it is so the rest is all just kind of skin changes on the same skeleton you know right. um and yeah i, I think that that's you know, something that we've definitely embraced and something we've tried to really kind of throw ourselves at and just say, look, we're, we're going to write music and, you know, we trust that what we do is going to be the best version of itself, whatever it may be, and see where we end up, you know? Right. And w- when we're talking about instrumentals, like, what did you guys do differently this time around in the studio? Just jammed. Yeah. You know, plugged things in, uh, made it sound good. Uh, if it sounded good, we just recorded it that was kind of it like we, we used a bunch of guitar pedals and um also recording like in a big drum room with a full console and stuff was a new one for us recording in like a big you know it was like an evmi console in the yeah. in the bottom room there and a big like very well constructed acoustic space for the drums mm-hmm. so between that and using a whole bunch of guitar and bass pedals a bunch of different guitars and basses depending on the different sounds that they contributed to right the record and if it just sounded good and it worked then we just committed to it and that in itself was kind of a cool process of just rather than you know trying to figure it out later it was just you know committing to it on the fly just made it work right now as you as you mentioned earlier like there was a there was a few songs that you kind of had to redo and redo before you, it finally made the record um which song in particular was like the one that you guys struggled with the most uh, it was definitely black um yeah. black we just we started off and it was kind of a very bouncy song very kind of you know mosh Corey and yeah. it, you know it was it was a cool riff but it just i don't know it just didn't feel like it was a it felt like a step backwards more than a step forwards for what we were doing so okay. it just ended up being that we rewrote it and rewrote it we went from like kind of that it, was, it kind of felt like glass house from the last record but yeah. um not necessarily even a better version of it just something different um but yeah just we rewrote it we made it a bit like time signature a bit more like progressive and even then that just felt like it was I don't know, just didn't really feel like a confident step in any particular direction. And then yeah. we ended up just using this, like, the sludgy riff that becomes the main thing. But did it, did it, did it, like, that became, like, the the riff rather than the breakdown of the song. And it became right. just this, you know, almost, like, hip-hop sort of hypnotic vibe yeah. that ended up being, you know, the, the soul of the song. And we had, a, like, 
vocals we had to rewrite from scratch about three or four times yeah. um, just in each format because each you know the vocals didn't translate as we shifted the style of the right. song a few times but yeah that was definitely the one that took the most kind of reworking but again once it kind of felt, happened it just felt like yeah this is what it's meant to be you know right and as far as translating the vocals um, you know do you feel like you had to change the way that you sing um, maybe scream less scream more um, oh, look, I, I don't see screaming as like a particular thing other than just one thing that may suit a moment, it may not, mm -hmm. usually it doesn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, in this time around, like, I think it was just that the main difference was just that kind of low, like, scratchy t t type vocal. Like, yeah. even the way I'm speaking now is closer to the way that that singing is when normally when I sing, it's a lot more correct from a technical standpoint. Right. Um, but this time around, you know, we, we actually set up a microphone like about a foot off the floor okay. and I was sitting on the couch and was one of those couches that's kind of swallows you a yeah, bit. Yeah. So I was hunched over on it, you know, drinking Jamison and black coffee just to kind of dehydrate my voice, which was pretty much doing everything wrong. To um, dehydrate on purpose to dehydrate? Uh, yeah, uh, just to kind of, yeah, just to kind of get that real like kind of you know, almost like Johnny Cash type, like okay. yeah. rum, that rumble and that grit in the voice. Yeah. And then we ran the vocals through like a bunch of different analog compressors, just each one taking out just a little bit more, a little bit more. So it meant for this really thick, even vocal, even though I was barely singing, like it's like, you know, I'm talking, it was like literally like this sort of level when I'm singing, like, Crazy. it's like, um, just trying <laughs> to think like, um, digging down in the dirt and sweat it out sweat it out till it doesn't burn like that like just singing that quietly yeah. but then having that hit all those levels of compression it just brings it up and makes it forward and puts it in your That's face crazy. and um and just getting that in that hunched over like breathless dried out sort of state it just created that really cool kind of grit and it felt like it gelled with the song because prior to that i'd kind of demoed some stuff and it was the same melody and the same lyrics but it was like singing it properly and it just it didn't it felt like the vocals on top of the song not in the song and so yeah that's that's why we trying to kind of push that envelope and yeah and we ended up retracking a whole bunch of the vocals on the record with that sort of setup and technique obviously you know pushing a little bit harder with some bits depending on the context but right. yeah it, it um definitely was a big change for me to kind of throw everything i know how to do well out the window and then re relearn how to sing for a minute and then stop myself so when i do it live i sing just normally yeah. because it's more about longevity than specific tone right but on the record you know you've got more time for tone and attention because that creates the way that people hear it live so if i sing it normally live right. they're still hearing that record version of it in their head so yeah that's an interesting technique though i've never heard of that so that that's pretty cool it was uh definitely <laughs> different and definitely push my push my boundaries and I had to be careful with it that I didn't kind of burn myself out right. ahead. So I always do it last after doing other main vocals first where I had to have that bit of extra push and that extra, you know, power behind it. Yeah. Right. Cause it does, it definitely takes a toll and I wouldn't be able to do it consistently. Sure. Like if that was the way I sang normally, I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Now for the last record, you guys went into studio with Eric Ron. Um, and he's also not only a producer, but he's a great writer too. Yeah. Did you, you guys got to write with him as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, um, we actually only recorded like, maybe three songs I think it was with Eric and um, we did the most of it with James Paul Wisner in Florida but we had a few okay. songs that we kind of co-wrote and then engineered with Eric here over here in LA and um, and then James mixed it all to kind of even it out across the record so um, I mean Eric's a fantastic writer we love what he does and what he brings to it and um, you know, we tilt. He, we still engineered and wrote tilt with him for this record. Mm -hmm. um, that was actually supposed to. We we did that at the same time, roughly as when we recorded Drift with Mike Green, oh, wow, um, yeah. and it was going to be like a follow up kind of you know intermediary single. But we yeah. thought let's like Drift did way better than we thought it would, mm -hmm. um, and we kind of kept it up our sleeves. And it, it actually ended up helping because there was this one song that we didn't quite finish for the record. It was like really close, but there was. Yeah, it's a little bit complicated, but like the yeah. reason we had we did, we couldn't put on the record basically at the end, so it, we've got to go back and rewrite. We're actually going in uh, tomorrow night just to kind oh, of wow. finish up those things, you just really to have that up our sleeve. <laughs> not really. I mean, it's it's mostly done, so it's certainly not like a big commitment. But just going in to kind of just rewrite and refinish those last couple of little bits that need to be finished for that right. song. But because that song dropped off, we put Tilt in the mix, and mm -hmm. um, you know, it definitely has served the purpose with the record. And we're you know, it's been really cool to play live, and right. um, people have loved it as a single as well. So just yeah, it's. Ended up working out for the best, but uh, yeah, pretty excited to get this new song finally, finally finished because it was actually one of my favorites. That's awesome. Now back to Eric Rondo. Like, yeah. what do you like most about like uh, writing with him? Um, because I feel like he's he's a producer that you know pe artists are starting to pay more attention to now. Yeah. But I've always been a fan of his work. Um, but what is it do you like about his his co-writing? Um, he just has a really good sense of melody, like regardless of style. And I mean, you know, I, I think that you kind of know what you're going to get from it, but it's right. always such a consistent, solid thing. Like, you know, it's always, he, he does anthems really well, just mm -hmm. that really kind of 
big, soaring, powerful chorus, and that's why it so, works so well for this genre that we've kind of, you know, existed in somewhat over the last few years. Like, right. I think that that's why he's had so many bands from this world going to him because he just brings that kind of memorable anthemic like driving powerful choruses right. and gets that really cool sense of dynamic space as well between the vocals and the, so between the verses and the choruses there's always just such a good balance so yeah I, I love him he's still one of my favorite people in the world and I like look you know like working with him on I always get his advice on different producing things because right. with my own stuff and just you know hang out and gonna swing through his studio tomorrow while we're in the area yeah. just to say say quick good day give him a hug and maybe beat him at FIFA probably <laughs> Nice. Now, you know, this, this tour ends tonight. Um, you guys, I feel like you guys have been on tour majority of this year uh, prior to you guys going into the studio and creating this record. It's funny. Everyone seems to think we're always on tour, but this year we've actually had, like, we had 12 months off since Warp Tour last year. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, that's, that's great that people are, you know, aware that we're still out there. I mean, in some ways, I kind of wish people realized we weren't touring that often because they might be less, you know, less likely to say, I'll see them next time. Yeah, I'll right. see them. You know what I mean? Like, that's always the challenge, especially here in America. But because right. people are so used to bands coming around like two, three times a year, yeah. whereas, you know, for us, we're trying to do it like once a year now. Um, but yeah, we actually had a 12 month break to kind of write and prepare the record. And I got married in that time. And that was, right. you know, thank you. Um, and just got to spend time just kind of being a normal functioning human for a bit <laughs> um you know with all the you know all the challenges of saving and spending money on a wedding and all that sort of stuff so i mean you know we're stoked it was everything we wanted to be but taking that time off meant that we had time to kind of go into the record confident and calm and relaxed and um you know and get on with life a little bit because band can very much take over your life to the point where it's right. really hard to kind of have a normal functioning right. you know adult <laughs> life <laughs> adult life or just life in general yeah but, um <laughs> but yeah so i mean we but because of that, we've meant we meant that once we did hit the road, we've had two months of straight touring. We did a little, a couple of release shows in Australia. We went straight on to do like a week and a bit in the UK. Mm. Went to do two weeks in Europe. Came over here. We've done like five weeks here now, and it's uh, it's been a pretty solid two months. And we get home, yeah, fly out Tuesday night, and yeah. back home for Christmas, and then uh, yeah, a couple of months off. Just which you know, Christmas is never really time off because you're always traveling to see family right, and kind exactly. of getting all that end of the year stuff. It's a sort of, kind of touring. it it is it is. But um, <laughs> you know, glad to just be home. Yeah, for sure. Right. Now, back to, back to summer. Back yeah, to summer. Seriously. That's that's there a good thing. <laughs> now, to close this off, like why do you is it still the same reason? Why do you, why did you start creating music when you started creating music? Oh, that's a tough. Like yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, I've always loved, I guess, you know, anything that's kind of a balance between creative and practical. Uh -huh. Like I, for me that kind of the the anything that marries the left and right brain together is like a it's for me that's inspiring and that's why I like producing it's so what you can you know combine like well this is what i want to do sonically and that's mm. the gear i need to do it like this is what i want to do you know creatively and this is a technique and the workflow that needs to make it happen and the, i think that's something about that's a, a you know music is a perfect world for that because it is a technical mathematical art that you're putting into a human what you know human element and there's so many different you know even career paths within music that kind of take something intangible and something tangible and you know kind of fuse them together to make something work so i think for me it's that that's always been the fascination with music um as far as like you know wanting to make i mean to be honest i sing because i can i i wouldn't say i've ever like you know i wouldn't say that singing is my life i've never been that mm -hmm. kind of you know driven i want to be a singer because for me i was playing bass originally i was completely happy with that like right. not for this band but just like when i met this just band i was playing band. bass and doing backup vocals for another band and um for me it's just you know it, it's just it's been a way to kind of see the world and you know make friendships and you know do a bunch of cool shit that most people don't get to do so i think for me i don't know i never really had these like high and lofty goals of like this you know i want to do this and do that and be that it was always just like i want to make something meaningful and see what happens with it and right. you know here we are 10 years later still seeing what happens because right. a lot has happened and there's plenty more hopefully still to come but oh, you, know, you know we, t we take it as it comes and you know we're, we're not we have no illusions about how big a band we are or aren't or right. could be or couldn't be, you know, like we, we just do the best we can to give ourselves a best platform and then just kind of see where it goes. And that's kind of, the, I guess, the, the excitement of it is just that music industry is so un unpredictable, but we're stoked that we have had the successes we have, especially with the early days of this record and yeah. even this tour, it's been, you know, certainly not been the biggest tour in the world, but as far as like consistently good turnouts, consistently good, like energy and like vibe and that's a, that's a cool thing with like kind of more intimate shows is that you get that you really get to kind of read that energy of each crowd and it's been you know such a mixed bag of people from all different kind of ages and right. walks of life and um and just they're there to just enjoy the music and that you know every song is someone's favorite song we play so it's just right. been such a cool energy and i think it's been like 
I think in a lot of ways has kind of you know restored any nerves like restored any confidence we kind of lost or you know nerves that we had about the new album how it was going to connect how it was going to go because people are already around it people are already singing back the words even the ones that aren't the singles like people are still singing back the, those songs just as loudly as anything else so it's um it's definitely affirming and we're stoked to see where it ends up